Hey everyone, Neil back again with Real Terrain Hobbies. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make some amazing, super awesome looking doors for your uh, miniature buildings. Fully functional, swinging inward and outward with actual metal hinges, uh, brackets, and handles. So stay tuned and let's dive on in. So to start off, let's go over our material and tools we're going to be using for the project. So we have 3 16 and 1 quarter inch balsa square dowel pieces along with a 3 8 bass square dowel piece that I don't have included in the shot I forgot to put in. Sorry, that's 1 16 of an inch balsa sheet, not 3 16 16 gauge steel wire and 19 gauge steel wire. And I ended up going with an oil-based stain and varnish. Uh, the brand name is Verithane and the color of the stain is called Espresso. And for our tools, you need a hammer, ruler, some needle nose pliers, a second set of pliers, or some type of razor blade. I use a pen style razor knife. And the glue we'll be using is PL Premium. And you'll also need a hard metal object to uh, be using the hammer on and to flatten out our steel. So I started out by cutting a uh, 1 and 5 8 by 1 and 5 8 opening into my foam core panel which will fit the material needed for framing out the doorway. So here we have our 3 8 bass square dowel and this is actually a hardwood and I ended up using my table saw to notch out roughly half the width of, of the dowel which is about uh, 3 16 of an inch and this is what I'll be using to install the pieces of wire that the door will be swinging on. And I use the hardwood to uh, have something solid and sturdy for the doors uh, so they won't be breaking off at any time in the future. And using a saw for the hardwood, I cut that to an inch and 7 16 So I use the heavier 16 gauge uh, steel wire for the door hinges and uh, to drill out the dowel we need to use a uh, 1 16th inch uh, drill bit and this will give a nice tight fit for that uh, wire to, to fit in. And you'll want the top hole to be roughly a quarter of the length down from the top and the same at the bottom, roughly a quarter of the length up from the bottom. So to make the hinges, uh, take your needle nose pliers about half an inch down from the tip of the uh, wire and bend it back at 90 degrees. So you'll have about half an inch sticking out and then from there cut off roughly an eighth of an inch or maybe even a little bit more than that uh, down from the bend to, uh, for it to have your door bracket uh, pivot on. And then let's go ahead and repeat the process for our second hinge. So now taking your second pair of pliers, uh, grab hold of the small end of the bend uh, and then taking the needle nose, bend downward on the uh, other side and flatten it against the back of the dowel. And then this will be glued in place with our PL Premium. Now just make sure the PL Premium glue is adequately spread over the two back ends of the middle uh, wire and uh, this or the PL premium will act as a filler as well as a bond. So just put a nice thick coat on that and those hinges are going nowhere. And once you have the piece glued on, uh, take your knife and adjust the uh, hinges just so that they're both standing straight and both the top and the bottom are both equal distances away from the edge of the dowel. And don't worry about the glue covered back side of the hinges being exposed. They're just going to get covered up later by our plaster for the wall. So I'm just continuing on here with the second door jam that I made and I ended up staining this one first, which I recommend doing. So now it's time to cut out the remaining pieces uh, for the inner door jam. And for that, we're going to use the 3 16 square um, balsa dowel. And that's going to be one and five eighths across the top and then the other side going down will be the same as the uh, door hinge piece which was an inch 
and seven sixteenths or thereabouts. You can shave off a little bit if you need to, just make sure it's a nice tight fit. Then uh, go ahead and take your quarter inch square balsa dowel to frame out the exterior of the door and cut that to fit. And if you want an exact measurement, it's an inch and 13 sixteenths, but just hold it up and um, you know, just measure it out yourself to what will fit. And uh, don't worry about that measurement being exact. And this top piece is roughly two inches long. And these pieces aren't detrimental to the framing of our door, but I just thought I'd go ahead and uh, leave these in. So now it's time to go ahead and cut the panels out for our door. And this is from our 1 balsa sheet of wood. And the measurement for our door is one inch wide and an inch and three eighths tall. And that's not including the hinges coming out the back side of the door, just the wood panel itself. And just go ahead and cut out some random pieces, kind of vary them in size, some a little wider, some a little uh, skinnier and it just adds to the character of the door. And no, this is not all for one door. This is enough here uh, for two doors. And throw some stain on all those. To do that, just slap it on and afterwards be sure to wipe it dry with a paper towel. Okay, and now we get to the fun part of forging out our metal pieces. And this actually is a process called cold forging. So you can say you actually forged out these uh, miniature doors to those who come and get to see your work of art. So get a piece out that's going to be longer than what you're going to be needing for your uh, for the actual door. Uh, now remember it's an inch wide so it's going to be a total of two inches plus a little bit for the loop which I would say add about um, or around an extra uh, three eighths of an inch and you can always trim the extra off afterwards if it's a little long. So you just go ahead and hammer it out to your desired thickness and then here afterwards I am just tapping it lightly on the side to straighten the piece out. And once you're satisfied with the length of the steel, uh, we're going to go ahead and put our bends in for the hinges now. And uh, just uh, take your needle nose pliers back uh, an inch from the end of the, uh, of the piece of steel. And that's from the end of the steel piece to the end of your needle nose pliers that is closest to the tip of our piece of steel. Bend it around the one side of the needle nose of, at the top there and uh, then cut off the other end at the same length as the uh, other side. And it's important that you bend the tips right together so they are touching on the far end. Uh, this will ensure that you get a nice tight fit around the pieces of wood when you go to slide them in and things aren't falling out on you uh, when you try to clip everything or put everything kind of into this this uh, clip here kind of is what it is um, this way it'll just make things easier on yourself and now that we've got everything ready it's time to glue in the uh, door panels or boards and uh, just to do that, all we're going to be doing is putting some glue on either side of the piece at the height that we want our hinge and kind of prying the piece of steel apart with our fingers to slide it back to the end and repeat the process for each of the boards. And I only glue the top one on first and set that aside a day for it to dry before I go and try and tackle the bottom. And this last board I was worried about falling off the end so I went and put some glue along the edge and uh, this will ensure that things stay nicely together.
And once you've got your pieces glued in, uh, just go ahead and gently wipe away any of the excess glue. So let's set that aside to dry overnight and let's move on to our door handles. So we're going to start off here by making the round piece of the door handle. And to do this you can either use um, the uh, 19 gauge steel or the 16 gauge. Here I used the 16. I actually forgot that I used 19 for my first one. And uh, in the end I found that the, uh, the thinner 19 gauge steel ended up having a nicer look to it. And so I'd recommend using that as opposed to the 16. But the 16 still worked and looks fine, but uh, it's kind of your choice as to what you want. So all I did for that is bend it around in a loop, and uh, I don't want to completely close the loop just yet. I cut it off first, and uh, you can see the struggle I had at uh, getting this thing closed once it was apart. Um, this is a frustrating part, so just uh, be aware of that. You might be pulling your hair out trying to get this one done. I ended up clamping my finger there, which hurt a lot. Uh, so just have some patience with this one and you'll get it eventually. I recommend actually sticking it inside one, uh, the wire of the uh, piece of, or of, your, of your steel roll. And uh, this way, if you're or a slip when you're trying to pinch it together it won't go flying uh, to the other side of the room like it had several times for myself and there we have it we managed to close the loop for the handle um, now let's move on to the piece that uh, will be holding this uh, into the door and for that I'm using the 19 gauge uh, thinner steel wire Simply bend it around almost to where it's touching, but leave it open enough that you can get our round piece in place. And uh, once you have done that, take the uh, round piece that we just made with our, your needle nose pliers and slip it in and then clamp that together and that will keep the handle um, in place. So here I just made a quick bend uh, just to see how much I'll be needing to cut off and I ended up straightening it out afterwards again before I cut um, as I will be needing to uh, put this in through the door where we drill out the hole to um, get this in place. And so here I went and made the second round handle for the other side of the door. Now for the 19 gauge wire, it is, I believe, 1 32nd inch uh, diameter drill bit. So I went ahead and drilled that out and uh, had that ready to slide in our piece for the door handle. So this is another tough part you might be fighting with uh, a bit, uh, but take your second pair of pliers and grab the other side of the 19 gauge steel piece that we slid through the door as best as you can and holding it on there we go ahead and uh, bend the other end around leaving a gap again to fit the round door handle in place. And once we get that in, go ahead and clamp down the piece of 19 gauge steel. And there you have it, door handles for our door. So you can see I went ahead and uh, glued in the bottom bracket for the door after it had dried 24 hours. 
And now here we have our doors. So far I've made three for this project and you can see the difference between the 19 gauge and the 16 gauge door handle itself, the round piece uh, for the handle. I found that the smaller 19, ga 19 gauge is a lot more appealing, but uh, the 16 still worked. So now we can go ahead, put our door on the hinges and finish framing out the, uh, the outer frame for the door. And uh, once this has dried, this is going to keep our door in place and it will not be able to slide out any longer. And you have installed your first door. So thanks a lot guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. Um, stay tuned, there's plenty more to come with this build. It is uh, turning out to be quite the project. Um, it is pretty intense, this whole house, uh, but it is worth it. It's turning out great and uh, I'm really liking the results. Stay tuned, we'll have more to come uh, in a very somewhat timely manner, but uh, we'll get there and uh, Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you on the next one.